Hey guys, I got a story to tell you today about this guy right here. But first off, to build a little suspense, I'm gonna go ahead and press the play button here real quick. Three last year, pool the other way will trigger a deep one after the quarter, although Chauncey was the starter. <laughs> and the elites are drawn kick into the ball, move around, and Jordan Poole takes the experience chase center all has offers for Anderson. Poole wide open, he should knock this down. I feel that's pretty cool, but something still feels missing. Hold on a second. This will be likely the last quarter for Ah, there we go. Couldn't finish that build up without a slam. And now that we've built him up a little, I think I can tell you the story now. Jordan Kid Splash Pool is truly looking like he belongs in the Splash family now. But today, we're going to rewind time just a bit to see where this all started for the young warrior star. Jordan Poole, JP, JP3, Kid Splash, whichever name you want to call him by, was born on June 19, 1999 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His athletic genes actually run throughout his family as his dad, Anthony, was also an incredible athlete during his heyday and played football at the University of Wisconsin, Whitewater. When JP was just a little kid, his dad began to organize pickup hoop games at the local Lutheran church every Sunday afternoon, and he would bring Jordan to these games to match him up against grown men. If this was not enough of a challenge, Anthony insisted that JP should play using an NBA-sized ball and shoot on a standard 10-foot rim. For people looking in from the outside, this appeared to be like an initiation or torture for a 9-year-old JP. But for Anthony, this was just his way of using basketball to teach his son a hard lesson on how to be tough, both physically and mentally. As expected, the grown men would push, grab, and sometimes elbow the young JP. But as time went on, Poole started to fight back, arguing for calls and even taunting them whenever he dropped buckets on them. 12 minutes to pull it off. As his confidence and skills grew, his father formed an AAU team that was built around him called the Wisconsin Playground Warriors. And even at this early age, Jordan began to consistently swish deep three-pointers before he even entered middle school. Although his dad also acted as his coach, Jordan never received the proverbial special treatment. In fact, his dad would always say harsh stuff and truth bombs to JP whenever he had a bad game, like, you played terribly. If you want to be just like every other kid and just have fun, that's fine. But if you want to play in the NBA, you won't make it playing like you did this weekend. You'd be lucky to play overseas. For the young Jordan Poole, it must have hurt him to hear his own dad saying those words. But on the other side, this was Anthony's alternative way to motivate his son to do better in the upcoming games. Jordan Poole was raised by his parents to be respectful, but at the same time, they taught him how to challenge everything. Whether if he thought that he deserved a better grade than what he received on a paper, or demanding an explanation from referees about controversial calls. JP grew up with conviction regarding things that he believes are worth fighting for. After playing for his dad, JP attended Rufus King High School and made varsity as a freshman, which is pretty rare and a hard thing to do. It was around this time that Jordan Poole reflected on his life, dreams, aspirations, and conjured this up. Hi, my name is Jordan Poole. I am 15 years old and I love the game of basketball. I began playing competitive basketball in the third grade with the Wisconsin Playground Warriors. I currently play for Wisconsin Playground Elite. My goal is to play college basketball at a very competitive Division I level. I am a naturally motivated individual and I push myself both athletically and academically. I am a team player with good moral values. I am the type of athlete that won't cause my coaches any gray hair. I love to win and I want to succeed so I push myself to get my goals accomplished. I would one day love to play in the NBA. If that dream does not come true for me, I would like to be a veterinarian or work a field that involves interacting with animals. I volunteer at my local Humane Society to help animals and to learn skills on how to care for them properly. I am very proud to attend Rufus King International Baccalaureate High School, one of Wisconsin's top public schools and one of the country's most competitive academic high schools. King was one of Wisconsin's best and most competitive basketball programs in the state, led by one of the state's best coaches. I am working really hard athletically and academically to prepare myself for the next level. Wow, what a thing to write when you're just 15 years old. Anyway, aside from all the on-court achievements, Jordan also challenged the norm and started a revolution in basketball fashion when he rolled his shorts up and reintroduced the iconic short shorts of the 80s. When he was asked why he rocked the short shorts, here's what he had to say. My first pair looked like parachute pants. They were awful. But by my junior year, 
I'd started a little short shorts revolution and almost everyone was locked into the look. I think JP was ahead of the curve because we see that there are a lot of NBA players wearing short shorts right now. But for some people, wearing short shorts is like, these right here look like the shorts that my wife might wear today. Anyway, JP played three years in Rufus King and transferred to Lalamere School in Indiana in his senior season where he played alongside future NBA lottery pick Jaron Jackson Jr. and also Brian Bowen, who went undrafted in the NBA. Coming off the bench, JP played really well in his final year in high school. According to his coach Shane Hireman, JP could have went anywhere and been a part of any starting lineup, but at the end of the day, Jordan accepted to come off the bench at Lalamere as the sixth man showing his commitment to be a team player, which is a similar role that he embraced just a few short years later as a member of the Golden State Warriors. As Coach Shane goes, he could start pretty much anywhere in the country and he probably should be starting for us. But for him to accept that role for us coming off the bench is an incredible testament to his character. The team would go on to the championship round of a tournament sponsored by Dick's Sporting Goods. And in that game, JP scored 13 points and racked up three steals, three rebounds, and four assists to help Lalamere defeat the powerhouse Montverde Academy, which was led by future NBA lottery pick RJ Barrett. During that particular game, as you can see from these upcoming clips, JP was already comfortable taking long bombs. I love the shot, but how about the cut? The IQ to flash to the open spot, can oh. they deliver? Iron said they had a hunger right from the start. Oh, Jordan Poole! After ending his senior year on a high note, JP's teammate Brian Bowen actually got involved in a corruption scandal where he allegedly took $100,000 to play at Louisville. Despite all the bad publicity, Jordan didn't shun Bowen at all and still reached out to him in the wake of the controversy just to check on his teammate. I mean, he's still a friend, we still communicate, FaceTime and text, but we never really talked about the situation that's been going on. Kind of kept it low key. Obviously it is what it is, but I just talk about all the memories and stuff that happened. After seeing how good of a friend JP is to Bowen, it kind of reminded me of this song. When JP was asked about his reaction to the controversy that his teammate got tangled in, he said that he's not into those kinds of things because of his parents' guidance. My parents always made sure that stuff like that wouldn't happen because it could jeopardize a lot of situations with kids. But my parents and the coaching staff here made sure that things like that weren't going to happen. Jordan would then go on to play as a Wolverine at Michigan. Just like his trend-setting short shorts revolution, JP found himself in the forefront of another revolution, but this time, it was just an internal thing instead of being a cultural phenomenon. After realizing that he and his teammate Ivy Watson rocked the same hairstyle, JP formed a squad called Drip Boys, and he began to recruit more members to his faction that parade the same buzz and froze. We told Isaiah to join us. We were like, we're about to start a movement. And then we all looked and saw that Eli looks just like us too. We got the same hairstyle. So we said, we're the Drip Boys. But then we thought, oh, we have to add a little diversity to the team. Who's got swag in their own little way? We had a couple of applications, but we looked at Hibbets and thought it'd be best to bring him. Hmm, since the Warriors have the Splash Brothers right now, there's a possibility that JP can recruit Chris Chioza and Jordan Bell to be part of Drip Boys 2.0 in the Bay Area, since all of them almost have the same hairstyle. Now, almost, Nick, what the f stop. Anyway, back in college, JP had a hard time finding minutes as a freshman, playing only a total of 13 minutes in his first six games, and he frequently butted heads with Michigan head coach John Bylian. Despite this setback, JP's confidence was never shaken at all, and his spirit wasn't broken. As his college coach would say, he drove you crazy sometimes, but you could chew his ass out in a timeout, and he'd be fine with you by the time you broke the huddle. He's really resilient. Nothing bothers him. Whenever he steps on the court, he always feels like he's the best player. Eventually, JP earned the trust of his coach and began to find minutes on the court. His biggest moment came when he hit the game winner at the second round of the NCAA tournament against Houston. At midcourt, extra pass. And it goes for the win! That shot allowed Michigan to advance all the way through the NCAA championship game, but sadly, they fell short against Villanova. Though JP would only average 6.1 points per game in his first year, he would double his shooting production in his sophomore year to 12.8 points an outing before he declared for the NBA draft, where he got selected by the Warriors as their 28th overall pick in the 2019 draft. In his first year playing in the Bay Area, Draymond talked about JP being unfazed as a rookie going up against the vets in the team. 
He also loved how he clapped back and trash talked with oozing confidence. He won't stop talking. He does not stop, which is funny to me, because I see people get pissed off in practice. I've heard a few people say, he is a rookie and he never shuts up. And I just sit there like, good job, young fella. You got him mad. I remember being that rookie that wouldn't shut up and everybody hated it. So you're doing something right, young fella. Keep going. I love it. Talk to whoever you want to talk to. Looking back at his upbringing, I think JP was able to bring the physical and mental toughness that his father ingrained in him early on, and now we can see that these traits helped him to become the player that he is today. Entering his third season in the NBA, he managed to weather the storm in his young NBA career after a shaky rookie year and then being relegated to the G League in his second year through sheer hard work and faith in his abilities. From a young age, I felt like I belonged here. There were people I didn't think that belonged here. They didn't really want it. So I feel the way I want it, I deserve to be here. Man, I think about it all the time. I'm blessed. But I always believed that I belonged here. I was always overlooked. I never got the credit I deserved, but I always kept my head down and grinded. And through all the noise, I just kept pushing because I had one end goal and it paid off. So now it's just time to reset and do it again. After his rocky first and second year, have you ever wondered how Jordan Poole resurrected himself? If so, click the video right here, where I go over exactly how he overcame his early NBA struggles and became the star that he is today. Click the video, guys, and like always, I'll see you on the other side.